Welcome everyone to another uh, Rocky in Action 15 minute learning session. Uh, today's talk, uh, we are going to be discussing filtration devices and how Rocky can be used to tackle uh, such class of problems. And my name is Vinicius Daros. So a filtration device essentially is a device that wants to separate unwanted uh, particles or be so uh, fluid or solid particles from a flow stream. And in order to do that, we essentially include, as you can see here on your right hand side, we include a filter medium that can be manufactured using several different techniques. And this filter medium will essentially try to separate these unwanted particles from the main flow stream so that in the end of the process, you have a cleaner or a completely clean uh, filtrate here at the other side of the filter medium. So uh, these filters, they come in several different uh, shapes and sizes, and they can be found in a lot of different industries, as you can see here, chemical, food, pharma, energy, home appliances, and also automo automotive, among others as well. The most, uh, I, I believe at least that the, uh, the ones that people are most familiar with uh, is the home appliances industry. So uh, you can find a filter in your vacuum cleaner. You can find a filter in your um, uh, air conditioning system in your home. And also, if you look at your car, you have a filter in the fuel system. You also have a filter in the air system of your car. And so this is, uh, I mean, there is a lot of, of applications that we can have a filter, okay? Uh, filters are essentially made of fibrous materials, okay? Or you can have, for example, uh, uh, porous media to uh, do this um, job of removing unwanted particles from a, a flow stream. And this is why Rocky actually is very powerful to uh, represent such class of, of problems because uh, we know that Rocky has a powerful fiber model that can be uh, used in several different ways. Those fibers can be flexible, can be rigid, can have large aspect ratios. That's something that other commercial codes actually struggle to handle. And as you can see here, I try to represent some examples of filters that we found uh, for different applications. So. This one that you can see here on your uh, left-hand side is some sort of randomly packed fibrous material. And Rocky can do that. You see that in the Rocky's uh, representation of this filter, we basically have also uh, randomly packed uh, uh, particle uh, bed of, made of uh, fibers. But also Rocky has the custom fiber model and the custom input model that essentially allows us to represent much more complex filter devices such as this one. So you can see here that this is a completely organized and controlled uh, way of creating uh, um, a filter using the fiber model. And we can do that by even coiling the system. As you can see here, this is a circular pattern, but we can also uh, do it uh, straight as you can see here. And everything is done using Rocky's embedded features, okay? And the good thing here is that when you solve a problem like this one using Rocky, you really have information of particle filter interaction, which is something that you don't have for a lot of other approaches, such as using a pure CFD simulation and the Poros Media approach, and also DPM approach and so on. We really cannot see particles clogging the system and accumulating on top of other particles. And this is something that we can do using Rocky. And when we have that information, we can easily uh, obtain separation effectiveness of the filter. We can obtain uh, how the pressure of the system will actually react to this clogging. And also we can compute the, the particle filter interactions taking into account adhesion, electrostatic forces, and everything else that is needed to actually represent the, the physical model. And uh, last but not least, we actually have the interaction at the pore or at the mesh level uh, being computed. 
just to give some more detail uh, of how powerful this uh, fiber model is, I bring uh, my, a closer look at those two examples I showed before. So this is uh, Rocky's custom fiber model being used to create a random, uh, randomly uh, distributed uh, filter shape. Uh, but using a very controlled, oh sorry, uh, using a very controlled, uh, uh, not only the particle design, but, but also the way that we inject those particles in the simulation, you can see here that uh, we can create very complex shapes like this one. And of course, if you, if you have interest on how we can use Rocky to do uh, these kinds of uh, uh, simulations, please uh, reach out to us and we will be more than happy to provide more information. So in today's section, we will pretty much discuss uh, the problem description of a, a quick example that I have created to show those uh, features. Uh, how have I set up the filter medium? Okay, And then how have I set up the final uh, CFTDM coupled simulation? Uh, and uh, finally, uh, some key results that can be obtained for this uh, simulation. So if you allow me to uh, switch screens here. Uh, so this is, uh, oh, sorry, I forgot to describe the problem description. So the example that I have separated today is pretty much a square duct flow, okay, uh, for which we inject dusty air here at the inlet and we prescribe a velocity inlet on the CFT side. And this flow will carry some dust particles uh, that will interact with the filter medium that will be created using uh, one of that randomly packet uh, filter designs that I showed. And then at the end, uh, we have a pressure outlet. So the, the CFD itself is a very simple simulation. It's just a square duct, okay? Uh, structured mesh, uh, easy to converge. And uh, I won't be uh, giving too many details of that model, but have in mind that uh, it's just a flow in a square duct and it will carry some particles that will interact with this uh, filter medium here. Uh, what we want to find is the pressure increase due to the particle accumulation here uh, into the filter. And then also we can measure, for example, the filtrate particle size distribution at the end here at the exit so that we know uh, what are the particles that are actually being trapped here at the filter and what are those particles that are not being uh, retained here, okay? Now I can move to the problem itself. So in order to create the filter medium, we have used Rocky's um, regular uh, fibers. Okay, so uh, we pretty much have two different flexible fibers here. One is uh, slightly different than the other. You can see they have the same length, but they have different diameters and they are both flexible as you can see here by separating the fiber in several segments. And these particles, they are allowed to fall on top of a plate there, okay? And they start to bend and start to twist because they are flexible. And then I just inject particles until I have uh, the thickness that I want. And finally, I allow some, uh, this top plate actually to compress these fibers a little bit and you will see that fibers are actually made very soft. And this was made on purpose so that we have a real situation here with some uh, irregular patterns here. Uh, okay, so that we don't have a perfectly flat filter medium, which is uh, not what we see in real situations. So as soon as I have this uh, filter medium set up, I pretty much go to um, file and save this project as a restart, okay? And then this is when I uh, load this fiber, okay? So this is my fibers. You see they are slightly bigger than the duke now and this was done actually to remove any uh, wall effect here because they are very uh, uh, straight here at the wall. So. I wanted to remove this wall effect of the packing I have created. So I have decreased the duct uh, diameter here a little bit so that we can achieve that. And the important thing here is that as soon as I load these fibers into this uh, simulation, 
I actually freeze them in space using one of the uh, API modules that we have. So this fiber uh, packing is not allowed to move, okay? Regardless of its interaction with other particles or with the flow field that is entering here, okay? And the flow field can be seen here. So it's just a, a, a straight duct. It will have an inlet profile here and it will uh, exit there with atmospheric pressure. Okay, so this is the important part. And then since I have my filter medium set up, I just create uh, a dust particle, okay? And this particle will have, uh, as you can see here, let me just enable the data editors. This particle will have a particle size distribution. It's just a spherical particle, as you can see. And I pretty much create a continuous injection here that will inject those particles with the flow field to interact with the filter medium. As we move on here, as we advance the time bar, you see these dust particles, they are very uh, small, okay? The particle size is very small and they start to interact with the filter medium. So you see here that some of the particles start to get trapped here, so they start to agglomerate. And this is something that cannot be done with other approaches uh, if you don't have this interaction at the mesh scale. And this is everything, and everything can be done using this, this model. Okay, so as we have that, what can we get from the simulation? So as I mentioned, we can, for example, get the, um, pressure increase in the system. So I just create a small cube process here. This is linked to the uh, fluent simulation, okay? So this is a fully coupled simulation, by the way. And we can have access to all the properties, all the properties of this flow field. So we have the fluid pressure, the velocity, etc. And then if we plot that, you will see that oh, it's this one. If we plot that, so this is the fluid pressure measured on that uh, cube there. So we basically measure the pressure, measuring the pressure at the inlet of that square duct. And we see that as particles flow, it takes a little while because this is probably when they reach the filter medium. And as soon as they reach the filter medium and they start to accumulate there, we start seeing the system pressure increasing with time, okay? So this can be very useful if you wanna, for example, dimension your piping systems or uh, your pumps that you use uh, for actually, um, or your, um, that you use to, to actually create this, this flow stream. And also we can measure, for example, uh, the amount of mass of dust that is actually being retained in the filter medium. So again, as the time uh, moves on, we can see a lot of uh, particles being trapped there. And finally, uh, we can also measure what I mentioned, which is the particle size distribution at the end of the process. So in order to do that, what I have created is a cube there as well at the end, okay? And then I can create, for example, a particle time selection of particles that have left the system. So these are all the dust particles that were actually uh, able to move through the filter media and were not trapped there. And with this, I just compute the particle size distribution and we can from that uh, get the amount of particles that were uh, not trapped in the filter medium. And we see that most of the particles are of course, as expected on the smaller, on the lower end of the particle size distribution, but we also have some uh, bigger particles uh, being able to move through the system as well, okay? So this is what I have separated for today. So if we go back to the presentation. Uh, so these filter simulations, they, of course, they allow us to try a bunch of different stuff. Uh, one of them is investigate different filter configurations. As you saw, we can create things uh, from randomly packed filters to very organized and, and controlled uh, filter representations. 
we can also determine how much time it takes uh, to reach, let's say we have a threshold condition that that filter is completely saturated with uh, uh, dust, for example, we can estimate the time that takes for that to, to happen based on certain operational conditions. And also in some, in, in, in some applications, we don't actually replace the filter when that happens. Uh, we actually uh, try a counter current uh, flow and then we try to clean that filter to be reused. So that's called a recovery efficiency for, for, for filters. And that we can also simulate using uh, that model I showed you. Uh, we can also, as I mentioned, dimension uh, the pressure and the piping systems. And uh, finally, we can determine, uh, this is one of the most important things, we can determine uh, what, is the, what is the quality of the filtrate after the flow interacts with the filter, okay? And also the tool has a lot more features and a lot more possibilities. So it's up to the user uh, to actually decide what he, what he wants and that should be possible, okay? So remember that we have other, other sessions for the Rocky in Action, okay? So keep tuned, stay tuned. And uh, you see here that we have, uh, this was, uh, today's section, but we'll have a lot of different uh, sessions as well coming up. Uh, feel free to connect with us in one of our uh, social media channels or also drop us an email, okay? Find our contact information here at rockydm.com and give us, uh, let us know if you want more information about filtration. Thanks a lot for joining.